The complex is a live art space. Now, our area of interest is two things. One is that we like to do productions where there is no fourth wall between the audience and player. So there isn't an us and them divide as there are in most other, in all other theatres in Indian Dublin. And the other is that we like to do plays that are new and that have some kind of social dimension to them. So some kind of dialogue that is meaningful and not fluffy theatre in other words. But we certainly, there's an age profile which is between about 25, no, between 20 and 35, which is a, an unusual age profile for a theatre. You know, I'd say The Gate and the Abbey would have a much older profile. So we do seem to be ki kicking that sort of, that younger crowd. The difficulty with NAMA is that it seems to have outsourced the allocation of the buildings to Savills. So we've got a, a To Let sign up, uh, and the company is Finnegan. So presumably Savills have now outsourced that to Finnegan's. So actually when you're trying to deal with whoever really is in charge, you're already doubly outsourced or triply outsourced in our our case because we're now dealing with the Savills lawyers who have sent us an eviction order. Actually we would like and we have proposed that we stay in the building and we pay a rent on a cultural rate which is um, shorter than Tesco would be paying although we understand that their deal was that they had a year's rent free. Tes Tesco might be produced pro proposing 14 jobs and they're claiming that they're adding to the local employment, in fact national employment level. In our opinion that's uh, a nonsense and they know damn well it is too um, because you have to take into account all the redundancies that go along with their, with their arrival and I know that they have targeted the closure afresh within six months of their arrival. They actually have are going to offer the some of the 52 people that work in Fresh, presumably 16 or 14 or whatever, a pay deal to come over and uh, work in Tesco. So they are literally predatory to that point. The Minister Dinahan intervened on our behalf once and the Chairman of our board did talk to Brendan McDonough in NAMA and p put our case. But their defence is that they need to make the most return out of any building that they have and they're going to hang on until they do that. I think it's very dangerous that the way the allocation of the buildings is going to go is in the hands of NAMA who are non-elected. In my view what's happening is that so many of these uh, buildings are vacant because really nobody wants to realise the fact that the rents and the valuation that's been put on the buildings are just ridiculously high. They're just, uh, but I imagine what's happening is that if they were to realise what they're actually worth in terms of the value that they get for, for renting them out, you know, probably NAMA would go bust particularly in the case of this area which needs regeneration. I think history has shown that when artists come in and create something special and something original and something peculiar to the area as well, that you know, that is the thing that you know, brings uh, colour to the area and increases footfall. We have done the decent thing and gone round to look and see is there another premises that would suit, but because of the nature of what we do, we need a place that has an open plan because of the fourth wall issue and that doesn't have too many pillars and that has height. And if you don't have that, and that's quite difficult to get in the city centre or in the northwest inner city, and we're pretty keen to stay in the area because we feel we've built up a, a relationship with the community. What we've been asking people to do is to write to us by email or hard copy and just give people's own personal views. I mean last week somebody actually wrote a poem for us. <laughs> it was really nice and other people have been drawing things as well and dropping them in um, and they've been coming every day.